Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week we're off to the opening of the Model Railway Club. See you again in a minute. <laughs> Now since about February this year the Model Railway Club shut down the premises and everybody has been working hard to get a new mezzanine floor put in. That finally came to fruition um, and a, an official opening in I think it was the end of September uh, yeah end of September I think and this was the video I shot at the time. Apologies for the sound quality again it's back to this GoPro not being at its best but um, Hopefully we got some decent footage of what went on that day. Um, there is a separate video or series of videos on the Leamington and Warwick Model Railway Club um, website about how the build was done and that's quite interesting to see how a group of pretty much amateurs led by a guy who is a proper builder um, put together this whole new mezzanine area and double the size of the club room effectively. A really interesting set of videos that were put out by the club. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get in the car and get over there and see what's going on. So it's a bit of a windy old road to get to the club. We've got a quite a nasty narrow track to get to about two or three miles off the motorway down at Gaydon. Uh, and as you can see it's not the best of days, a bit murky and foggy but um, one of these things that you can't plan in advance. Club's on a farm and this is the road in and this in front of us is the potato barn that we took over in about 2005 and did all the conversion work in the first place to get the facilities that we've got now. The entrance area is pretty much as it was before. You used to turn left into a library, but the t kitchen and toilet facilities that we put in in the first place are still the same. They've just been cleaned up a bit and tidied up. All got automatic lights on them so that um, you can't leave lights on at night. But uh, it's a good little setup we've got. The kitchen, which again has stood the test well of about 15, 18 years of use. Got the fridge, dishwasher, cookers. So let's have a look at the um, upstairs first. This is the new part of the uh, club room now. This is the whole area that they've opened up as um, additional space if you like. It's virtually doubled the floor space of the club. Uh, and certainly the usable space for layouts because the downstairs has got toilets and kitchen and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Uh, the double O gauge modular layouts are up there which are uh, individual layouts that people bring along and can bolt together in any configuration. They've all got standard uh, end pieces on them. Uh, Dawn Quest who's got a channel on YouTube had brought her layout along that's monochrome. Um, the whole thing is in different shades of, of grey rather than colour to look like the old photographs. So that was a sort of a guest layout as was one of our club members Titfield layout which is basically the Titfield Thunderbolt um, played out with uh, model railway locomotives rather than the film and that was unusual to see. That whole space upstairs has got room for additional layouts now to be built by club members. Um, this is the double O layout that exists up there now that used to be downstairs where the library is at the moment. And that's the other end of the modular layout with other people's bits and pieces of modules. The engager in the middle with two or three layouts. Then around the edges of the room where it's haven't got the same head height we've got workbenches. So lift for downstairs and then at the rear of the room there's another fire escape down that takes us back down to the original club rooms level. We lost a little bit of floor space on the ground floor with lifts and 
emergency staircases but that's more than made up for with the room upstairs downstairs we've got our Kimball layout that I've been working on for 20 years that is more or less in the same position it was And then over on the other side of the room is the Clarendon group that work in P4. Uh, that has also been running for pretty much uh, 25 years, I think. They've been uh, they've got uh, exhibition plaques on their layout that go back to 1994, I think. So they've got. Uh, even more time invested in that layout than we have but it's opened up that entire ground floor area for us for the library is now moved over by the tea counter and we've got a bit more space to to grow if we want to build another small layout it was time for the opening officially by Pete Waterman Little did I realise in 2006 that I'd be back to open another room. Um, as you know, I'm local from here, so I spent a lot of time at Lemons's Bar. I was just telling John I did a lot of courting around here when I was a DJ in Coventry because it was quiet out here. Especially when I finished at Mr. George's at 2 in the morning. The Lemonton will go to bed about 10 o'clock, so you're fine. Um, but it really is a magnificent spot and uh, you know, at the moment, Lemonton Spa in my barn is not working, but it will be in about two weeks. And I hope that once you've all got yourself together after this binge, we can get you back up there for a running day, because there's a lot more to see than when you were last there. So without ado, I wish you all the best for the next 20 years. Then after the opening, um, we went outside to have a look at the outdoor layout which is down by the Nightco Boat Club that have got the lake down there and um, see some of the new stuff that's running on the outdoor layout live steam that enables us to use as well as the stuff that I'm getting into which is more the um, 3D printed stuff in Gage 1 which um, we had a quick chat with Pete about the way these things have moved on over the years and improved. I think I've had a piece of that in the car for two months now. And it's alright. And it's alright. But it's quite thick. Yeah. You can't call it, that's the problem, isn't it? So, you, you know, it, it's... Some of the early it's stuff I did for Levington Spa is just falling, it's just literally crumbling. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that's 25 years ago. But it is just physically crumbling. What were you printing in? I mean, pretty expensive stuff but by that stuff. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have we didn't have small machines. I mean, we have big machines. Yeah. And then putting them old. Yeah. Can we be cheeky and get a photo with you on the actual track? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it was time to go and get some. Pictures taken for uh, publicity and get a bit more running in on the track. The uh, Deltic that's running there is 3D printed, as were quite a lot of the other uh, locomotives that were running. This uh, OH Hunter is one I've got the body built for, again 3D printed as are most of the wagons.
Sprinkler was uh, and a high lorry. It was uh, maximum speed That's the west coast of yeah. Sprinkler. Yeah. It's on the curve, so yeah. it comes up the curve. So like the duchesses and the princesses were always up around about 95. And they were all impressive, but the princesses were the most impressive. They came off that curve. They shook that station. All the duchesses platform. It's, it's why it sat, sat there, so that looking through the pool. Yeah. We've got many people on there. Uh, there are thousands. Look at this mushroom. There's some of the 3D printed locomotive bodies I've been printing over the last few months. And that was a particularly interesting little terrific type locomotive that was running all 3D printed wheels, motion and everything. I think the diesel rail car was 3D printed ends with scratch built plastic sides. I've also built the body for this one, the class 87. That one is um, again 3D printed. got the live steam out to uh, rattle around. All of these are remote controlled, radio controlled and some of them are just lean over and uh, switch it on sort of thing. It's a different sort of modelling really. This is moving Gauge 1 seems to sit between railway modelling and model engineering, it's sort of on the cusp of both. So it's a slightly strange um, jump for me to take in that I'm moving into new territory. There's probably less detail in it because you're running outside, you're not going to be getting it down to every last door handle and nut and bolt on the coach perhaps, but there's a certain presence to it, yeah. particularly when uh, you get the live steam pulling it, which I aspire to at some point. <coughs> well, we've had a very successful day. The weather's cheered up a bit, hasn't been too bad, there's been quite a lot of running on the outdoor track and the new facilities indoors look pretty impressive. So now if you are interested in the build of the club rooms from what we had to what we've got now, there are a series of about seven videos on the Leamington uh, and Warwick Model Railway Club website which I would urge you to have a look at because they go into far greater detail of what we did. Um, so if you went to LWMRS on YouTube or went to our website, which I'll put in the details below in the uh, description, um, there's, as I say, seven videos there that detail exactly what was done because it was quite a, an involved building operation that was cost the best part of £75,000 so it's uh, well worth a look if you've got a few minutes. Who'd have thought 20 years ago when I joined the club 20 miles north or 10 miles north or so um, what it would have become in, in those 20 years. <coughs> Indeed the layout, the O-gauge layout that I work on has also been running for that 20 years so quite a, a chunk of life really in there so i hope you've enjoyed the video look forward to seeing you on the next one see you then bye